Let's have let's keep the good time going with your next comedian from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Make some noise for Will Crawlett. Oh, Milwaukee, yeah, I like that. Yes. That is awesome. I, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I hope you guys are healthy and happy. I, I had COVID back in December. <laughs> And I landed in the hospital for five days. It was scary. Um, they took a chest x-ray. They came in and they said, we noticed when we took the chest x-ray that you also have arthritis in your spine. I was like, Jesus Christ, can I have one bad thing at a time? Can you have arthritis in the spine? I said, where? And they're like, pretty much all over, man. So I feel like I need to sit down. I got arthritis in my spine, so. 18 months, I didn't get a chance to see my grandchildren. And my youngest granddaughter is three and a half years old. So she hasn't seen me since she was two. And when I saw her, she forgot who I was. She said, what's your name? I said, I'm Grammy, sweetie. She said, who's your daddy? I'm like, no, I'm your dad's dad. Not only that, your name is Will. You're named after me. My name is Will. And she said, you just said your name was Grampy. Yeah. Oh, Grampy's telling stories. So now I'm involved in a circular argument with a three-year-old, and she is winning. So I try to explain it to her. I'm like, no, I'm, I'm Grampy to you, I'm dad to your dad, and I'm Will to everyone else. She said, that doesn't sound real. I said, I'll tell you what's not real, Santa Claus. And I ran away. Come on, it's a joke. I, I can't run, I got arthritis in my spine. Come on. So I remind you guys, please put your cell phones on vibrate. Cell phone usage in public has gotten out of hand. I was in the restroom at my day job this week and somebody was talking on their cell phone in the next stall. Finally, I had to say something. I was like, hey, if I have to sit here and listen to your dumb conversation, how in the hell am I supposed to come? <laughs> My break's almost over. I'm trying to concentrate. Will you please shut the hell up or say something sexy? <laughs> to which they reply, will you please leave the ladies' room? <laughs> Come on, it's a joke. I can't jerk at work. I got arthritis in my spine. I don't know if y'all heard. <laughs> yeah, man, I've been at that job for 27 years. 27 years and I've been written up one time only. To say a nice tits to a coworker. But like I said to the boss, that's not sexual harassment because I said it sarcastically. <laughs> to a male coworker. He was wearing a white dress shirt without anything on underneath it. I think I can speak for all of us when I say, don't need to see your dark hairy nipples in the workplace. Cover that shit up. I felt bad the next day. I complimented him on a lovely blouse. He said, it's not a blouse, it's a shirt. I said, it's pink, it's a fucking blouse. He said, it's not pink, it's coral. And I don't know nothing about no coral, but I fully support your lifestyle. I do, I like the guy, and he's planning to get married to his partner. I will go to the wedding. I will. And uh, I'm just not going to the bachelor party. <laughs> there is no way in hell a male stripper is going to shake his junk in my face, ever. Again, I just chalk it up <laughs> to blackouts. I used to drink too much when I was younger, and I would end up in some blackout situations. And I'd be out at the club every night dancing, and I was good too. I, I know that because a complete stranger came out on the dance floor and said, I can tell by the way you dance that you're really good at sex. I was like, wow, I am flattered. <laughs> that is very kind of you to say, sir. <laughs> what? Can you buy me a drink? I don't see why not. Next thing I know, I wake up cold and alone with no wallet and a funny taste in my mouth. So I don't, I don't dance no more. <laughs> On account of the arthritis in my spine. <laughs> I'm, I'm the youngest of seven. I come from a very large family and people say, Oh, the baby, you must have been spoiled. No, <laughs> not in my family. In my family, the youngest got their ass kicked by everybody who lived in that house. It was brutal. But you know, over the years, large families become smaller, and one by one, I had to watch as my siblings departed this earth. And as of last October, I lost my last remaining sibling. I win. 
<laughs> and I gotta be honest with you, my two remaining siblings are not gonna like that joke. <laughs> Wait, wait for them to die before I can tell that joke? I can't wait. I think I'm next. Seriously. I got diagnosed with uh, severe sleep apnea. I went to the sleep study. They woke me up and said, we have to put you on oxygen. We thought we were going to lose you. I'm like, what? Yeah, you went to sleep and your oxygen levels dropped to very dangerous levels. If you don't get this machine along with oxygen, there's a very good chance that you could have a heart attack or a stroke and die in your sleep. And I was like, oh my God, die in my sleep? Oh my God, that is awesome. Who doesn't want to die in their sleep? Come on. How did you die? I don't know. I slept right through that shit. First he went to bed, then he woke up dead. He went peaceful. I'll take that anytime. I'm going to tell you guys, I don't know if any of you are religious or not, but um, the Bible says not to worship idols. But Carrie Underwood, I'll be damned. <laughs> Jesus, take the wheel because me and Carrie are climbing in the back. And that is a dream come true for Carrie. Because a nightmare is still technically a dream, right? Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. That's my Ladies and gentlemen, give it a round of applause.